All right, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. We got another breakdown for you guys. This is passage number six, BB passage. And as always guys, go ahead, do the passage on your own first and then hear me break it down. So I'll scroll down so you guys can see the whole passage. Okay, pause it whenever you need to. All right. This is the first question, okay? Do the questions on your own first, write down your answers, see what you got right, what you got wrong, see where you messed up, okay? Because the mistakes are very, very helpful in you know boosting your score up, okay? You gotta identify your weakness. When you identify your weakness and fix that weakness, you're gonna optimize yourself to get a better score. Plain and simple, it's how it is, okay? All right, I'm gonna break it down now. I'm gonna show you guys where to highlight, how to pick the best answer, how to interpret figures, all that stuff, yada, yada. Let's begin. <clears throat> Recent research was conducted into organellar DNA and cytoplasmic inheritance. Laboratory mice were observed over a few generations. First generation female individuals, as well as all of the offspring of these individuals, presented with subacute necrotizing encephalomyelopathy and lactic acidosis characteristic of Lee eye syndrome, a cytoplasmic inherited disorder. Okay, wow. It's a mouthful. So what's important here? Well, what's important is that we have first generation female individuals as well as the offspring, all right, and they presented with this disease. And this, this disease is a cytoplasmically inherited disorder. All right, female, offspring, cytoplasmically inherited. Cool. Some of the mice were transfused with genetically modified erythrocytes, which contain genetic code resulting in secretion of the compound EPI743 into the blood plasma. All right, my neighbors are mowing their lawns, guys, so I'm gonna let the lawn mower pass and I'm gonna continue. Okay, just ignore that for now. EPI 743. Okay, just to uh, summarize what we just read. So these mice were transfused with a genetically modified erythrocyte, and when it does that, there's gonna be a secretion of this compound called EPI 743 into the blood plasma. Cool. EPI 743 has been shown to lessen the severity of Lehigh syndrome. Highlight that, that's important. Okay, I'm highlighting what sticks out of me and I'm highlighting what's important, okay? I'm highlighting this because I want to make a mental note in my head and remember what EPI 743 does. Okay, I've never studied EPI 743, so I'm gonna highlight it, okay? Other mice were genetically engineered to contain this genetic code in gametes. Production of these gametes was observed at multiple stages through optical microscopy, and the figures below reproduce these observations. The researchers used the observations contained in the above to track time-based movement of and interactions between homologous chromosomes. Okay, they're looking at these homologous chromosomes. See what's going on here. What's the movement of homologous chromosomes? Earlier research has indicated that a protein lattice known as the synaptonomal complex, okay, what is this complex, is responsible for physical connection of paired homologous chromosomes at points known as chiasmata, okay? and that this synaptonormal complex is responsible for helping to limit double strand breaks during meiosis. Okay, what does this synaptical complex do? Limits double strands breaks All right, of meiosis to occurring between homologous chromosomes rather than sister chromatids. Okay, cool. That's pretty useful, that synaptonemal complex. And then here are some figures. Okay. My opinion on this passage, easy. Where is it hard? Okay, maybe, no, not even this part's hard, guys. The MCAT is an easy exam, okay? Those people that are telling that the MCAT is this uh, beast, you know, impossible exam, they're lying to you, okay? It's not that hard when you know what to do, when you take it easy, when you relax your brain, okay? Every time you encounter a passage, relax your brain, okay? Take a deep breath if you have to. When you are stressed out, when you have anxiety, when you're panicking, it shuts down higher level thinking. All right, this is proven. So you have to relax. Be relaxed when you do this. Relax, cool, and confident. That's always how you have to do it. Okay, let's go. 
What is the most likely transmission mechanism for the passage of Lee syndrome from parent to child? Well, they told me Lee syndrome is cytoplasmically inherited. Okay, so I'm already going to eliminate this guy. Okay. And they also tell me that it was the female, right? First generation female as well as the offspring individuals. It's inherited the, for the females. It's inherited through the cytoplasm through females. Okay. Cytoplasmic inherited RNA. No, no, not at all. Okay. I don't hold on the lawnmower. Okay. It's definitely not inherited RNA. Not at all. All right, B, cytoplasmically inherited transcription errors. Mm, transcription does not happen in the cytoplasm. Transcription happens in the nucleus. Mitochondrial DNA. Through process of elimination, this is correct. Also, guys, mitochondrial DNA is passed from mom to offspring. Okay, you can kind of remember it with M. M, mitochondrial, M, mom, mother, maternal. Okay, so the answer for 31 is C. The researchers participating in the experiment described above were assigned to conduct new experimentation, also on Lee syndrome positive mouse specimens. As a precursor step, it was decided to create a new population of Lee syndrome positive mice. What would be the, mo the option most likely to be successful in creating this population? Well, we want, okay, that's easy, guys. We want to create a population of Lee syndrome positive mice. Okay, induction of intentional mutations in the mitochondria of pre-fertilized ova. Yeah, ova is the egg. Okay, it's passed through the mom. Cytoplasmically inherited disorder through the mom. Ova, maternal feature. It's the mom. The mom has the egg. Mitochondria, cytoplasmically inherited. A is right. Induction of intentional mutations in the mitochondria pre-fertilization sperm cells. No, it's not passed through the male. It's passed through the mom, not sperm cells. Also, the mitochondria sperm cells. I'm pretty sure it doesn't go into the, into the into the fertilization. All right, it's, I'm pretty sure it's just the head of the sperm with the DNA in it. Induction of intentional mutations in the mitochondria of either type of gamete. Again, we want the mom. I right, want the mom. It matters which gave me it is. It has to be the ova. It has to be the mom. Induction of intentional mutations in the mitochondria of synaptonemal complexes. Um, they told us that synaptonemal complexes involve some type of crossing over, and it helps to prevent double strand breaks during uh, meiosis. I mean, it's it could be, maybe not. This is just an answer that looks fancy that's trying to direct your attention towards this. <clears throat> All right, it looks fancy, but the answer is A. You have to be confident. You can't just pick something because, you know, it sounds right. You have to pick something that is right. Okay, 32 is A. Which of the following represent differences between growth of cell cultures containing cytoplasmic organelle disease versus genetic transmission of nuclear DNA from parent to offspring? Don't really know what they mean by that. I'm not quite sure exactly what they're saying here, but let's look at the one, two, and three here and see what's wrong and what's right. Meiosis maintains the genetic integrity of growing cell cultures. No, it doesn't. Meiosis, it adds genetic diversity and variation. That's not maintaining the integrity. While mitosis arranges nuclear DNA into a form which is transmissible to offspring. Hold on, let the one more pass. Okay. This is wrong. Meiosis does this. Meiosis makes a diploid to haploid, so we can uh, trans admit that DNA to offspring. So one is wrong. The process of arranging nuclear DNA in preparation for transmission to offspring is a cyclical process. No, they're talking about meiosis here and meiosis is not cyclical. Mitosis is cyclical, but meiosis is not. Okay, meiosis doesn't repeat, 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 repeat. 
while the growth of cell culture is carried out by a non-cyclical process. Okay, the growth of cell cultures is from mitosis, and mitosis is a cyclical process. So two is wrong. Growth of cell cultures requires transformation of diploid cells into haploid cells. Again, that is wrong. Meiosis does that, and the growth of cell cultures is mitosis. While genetic transmission of nuclear DNA to offspring requires transformation of haploid cells into diploid cells. This is wrong. The transmission of nuclear DNA to offspring um, requires transformation of diploid to haploid, not haploid to diploid. They're all wrong, answers D. I you know it's, it's very rare for it to be none of the above, but they're all wrong. Okay, you have to be confident. What aspect separates single crossover events from double crossover events? Oof, I'm not too, oh, this is kind of, I'm not too familiar. I mean, I remember doing this, but I'm not too strong in this suit, in this topic here. Let's see. Single crossover events result in one-way displacement of chromosomal content from one chromosome to another, while double crossover events always reverse this one-way dis. No, they don't always reverse the one-way displacement. They could, but not always. Remember, be careful of these always, never. You know, these strong words, you know, they're usually wrong, okay? Research, science is never, it's, it's really hard for science to always be, to have an always or a never answer to something. There's always like, there's always things that can just inhibit it, and there's always things that can kind of just prevent scientists from saying that things are 100%, okay? So A is wrong. Single crossover events occur during mitosis when a cell splits into two cells. No, 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 no. That doesn't happen. There is no crossing over in mitosis. B is wrong. As soon as I smell BS, chop it away. Completely wrong. Single crossover events affect only the ends of chromosome arms, while double crossover events can affect segments in the middle of crossover arms, of chromosome arms. Yeah. Okay, I don't see anything wrong with this. I'm not too crazy, but let's see what D is. Single crossover events only affect one arm of each chromosome, okay? While double, double crossover events affect two arms of each chromosome. No. No, no, no. This does not. When have you seen a crossover that affects both arms of the chromosome? That doesn't happen, okay? Single crossover or a double crossover will only affect one arm of a chromosome. Process elimination, C. Okay, and I, I don't know if this is... Double crossover events can affect segments in the middle of crossover chromosome arms. Yeah, I, I, yeah, because I don't remember seeing a crossover diagram where it was a single crossover and the end of the chromosome wasn't involved. Okay, they always had the end of chromosome involved. So let's go with 34C. All right, and that was it, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. All right, let's see if we got everything right. Bam, ba bam. Bam. This one. Okay, yeah, we got this one right. Cool. Yeah, guys, I've never seen a crossover with both arms involved. So if you guys are interested in working one on one, go ahead to the comment section of this video. Click on the link. I'll interview you. See if we're a good fit to work with each other. And if you are, then I'll invite you to MCAT University, which is the number one program in the whole entire world to hit your target score. Everyone at MCAT University is going to hit their target score. I guarantee it. So if you're interested in working with that, I made it affordable for you guys. I made it affordable. Okay, so go ahead, sign up, see if you're a good fit. I can't wait for you to be inside MCAT University. I'll see you guys in the next one.